So welcome everyone to our girls talk today and I'm really happy to be with all of you here to talk to you about one more topic. Those of you who were in our girls talk here in the UK and some other countries as well, you know what we are talking about. We started talking about the villains, mm -hmm. right? So we, what kind of villains uh, Kimberly are we talking about and, and what was it that's just recapping what was spoke about and, and Last, last month, month in the month of February, what yeah. was it that I was spoke about and what villains are these that we are going to talk about with the girls, with the ladies? So last month we spoke about the heart, the emotions, you know, the, the way we feel in, the, in making a decision, you know, the way we feel about ourselves. So the villain comes in a very sly way and it, the way it presents itself is so reasonable, like, you know, the way it's so subtle and it's like, oh, I don't feel like doing this today, or I feel this way, or the thoughts come, so I feel this way. And when we go by that, it destroys our faith, because mm -hmm. faith is through action, it's through, you know, believing, not through emotions, because God doesn't speak to our feelings. Mm -hmm. God speaks to our mind, which is faith, inte intellectual faith. Mm -hmm. So that's what we spoke about, being careful about the emotional villain. The, the, the heart. Name of the, ah, the heart. <laughs> the villain is the heart, which the comes heart. to destroy us. And it's very subtle, isn't it? Very Many people subtle. would never imagine because the world tells them otherwise. Follow your heart. Follow your heart. Listen to your heart. Yeah. Right? <laughs> Follow your heart. Listen to your heart. And and uh, you know we have to go with your, what your you heart feel, says, yeah. how you feel. And one of the, the things that the heart also affects and, and deceives many times in regards to the love life as well. Isn't yeah, it? you know, for example, you probably did a purpose. Okay, the next person I'm going to see, that's the one for me. And then the, a guy randomly shows up and boom. No, I think it was God. But you didn't, you know, consult God fully. Is this your will? So you go based on your heart in that moment. Or you, you know, what I usually hear, sometimes people say there are no, there are no men in the church. Mm -hmm. And I say, I don't know what they're looking at. Maybe they're looking at trees or they're looking at the chairs because... There are men there, but then the, the heart tells them, no, there's this guy in your workplace, or there's this guy in your school, or your neighborhood, you know, he's he's nice, he's not faith, mm -hmm. you know, he doesn't practice the same faith as you, but he's a good guy, so go for it, you know, you can change him. But many times, as we see, it's the opposite, the person changes that person, your mm -hmm. faith in God starts to deviate. And before you know it, you're far from God. Mm -hmm. So that's one way the heart works with the love life. Or no one, no one is gonna like me. Mm -hmm. I'm not beautiful enough. You know, I'm, I don't fit the quality of anyone. I'm gonna die alone. You know, maybe we have those who are listening and they're advanced in age, mm -hmm. and we even have younger ones. They're still 18, 19, and they're like, oh, my love life. You know, they're so old. I'm so old. So old. Come like, on. <laughs> So the heart, it's, uh -huh. it's so deceitful, it's so wicked, it, it just mm -hmm. seeks to destroy us. And every time we follow it, we end up in trouble. Mm -hmm. We end up doing the craziest thing that we thought we'd never do. And, and that's when the regret comes in and the guilt and then the devil plays on, which mm -hmm. we link to exactly. the, the villain of today. The villain of today. So the purpose of these meetings that we're going to have here with all of you uh, now is live, but we believe very soon we'll be able to do it in person as well. Is the purpose to make sure that we are strong, just like some of you already have this with you, if you can see it here. See, I am strong. So the purpose is to make sure that you are strong, to make sure that nothing will be able to weaken your faith, and nothing will make you give up on your goals, give up on your dreams, give up on glorifying God through your life, giving up on changing to become better, better person, to become strong indeed. Many people, they start strong, but in halfway through, they, they start getting weak, they start giving up themselves, start giving in to a lot of voices, right? And one of the voices that leads a person to be weak spiritually, which is the number one enemy of our spiritual life, is called doubt, right? The villain of today is doubt. How does doubt come in to us? How does the doubt come to, to ourselves? How can a doubt start getting so strong in our minds, in our lives, to the point of knocking us down? Does, does, are you the only one who have doubts? Are only those who are weak in the faith 
the only ones who have doubts those who are spiritually strong don't they have doubts don't doubts come and and, and go into to their minds as well what do you think huh? okay, okay. please answer us do you think that doubts only comes to those who are weak those who are not capable those who are not well spiritually hmm? what do you think so corona doubts <laughs> <laughs> somebody wrote here corona doubts <laughs> Yeah, so all those corona doubts, <laughs> the doubts, especially now, so many, so many things that pops up in their mind and everything. So not only those who are weak, those who are um, fearful, those who don't think good things about themselves are the ones who face doubts. Actually, doubts comes to everyone. And one of the, the, the ways that the doubts come to us is that doubt that comes uninvited. It's that it comes out of nowhere. Let's say that you are in faith, that you are working hard to, to, to please God. Some of you already have the Holy Spirit. You already uh, converted to God. You left your past behind. You're no longer the same person as you used to be, right? You, you, even though you have mistakes, but you're living a, a right life before God. But sometimes a doubt may come out of nowhere. Through what? Through thoughts. And what do these thoughts say to you? Usually, what do these thoughts come like out of nowhere and, and bombard them like randomly? Like you mentioned about the past, you could just be there and it just comes randomly. Wow, you're such a horrible person. Look at what you did. Look at what you did. That was the past. That was not you anymore because you've changed. You've made the decision to change and to, to start a relationship with God. But then he comes. Look at what you did, look at what you said, where you went, if you probably had an abortion, you're a horrible person, you killed you killed a baby, or you know, you, you slept around, you're such a, a, a dirty person. Mm -hmm. And if you are not watchful, then you start believing mm -hmm. in what you already had been set through, what Jesus already set you free from. So it's not you something you're, you're not living you're not now. Living now. But sometimes, and, and I, I've seen this as well, Kimberly, sometimes people start comparing their testimony to somebody else's testimony. Yeah. And sometimes they came from a, a lifestyle that was really dirty, yeah. right? Promiscuous sometimes. And they were involved with so many bad things yeah. and wrong things, so many bad choices they made, like as you said in the past. Maybe they did atrocities, things that, you know, when they look at someone else and they see them there, and oh, what what is that testimony? Oh, they grew up in church. They are always they've always been a nice person, yeah. and they never really did the bad things that they did. Yeah. So little by little, they start feeling like they they they're worthless. Yeah. They are not good enough. Yeah. They're Isn't not good it? enough for anyone, and they're not good enough for God. Mm -hmm. So they've already changed. Maybe this person's already changed. You know, delivered. They have the Holy Spirit, the new birth. But then that thought of your past or when you're comparing mm -hmm. your story, your testimony with someone else is that, gosh, why would God ever want me? Mm -hmm. And when you allow, when you sit in that thought, it's not you, but the more you sit in it, it's the more you're going to become that person. Mm -hmm. So you're going to now push the Holy Spirit, push God, even yourself away from God. Mm -hmm. And then the devil wins because he says, Look at your past. Yeah. It's unforgivable. Mm -hmm. Or um, what other way? Traumas that happened. Mm -hmm. You know, there's some people, the traumas of their past still comes because the devil is so dirty. He's always going to find an opportunity. He's going to find a moment when you're weak, the moment, even when you're strong, even when you're there, you know, I'm going to break through and Sometimes everything. Comes to our word. Yeah. If somebody throws at you, are, are you sure? Are you sure? That's a good one. But I, did you really change? Are you sure? Yeah. I, I don't think people change like. Or they that. make a joke and mm -hmm. then it's like, oh yeah, maybe, maybe that's maybe, right. Maybe I'm still the same. Mm -hmm. Maybe and I did not change. Wrong. Yeah. Or people complain about them. Maybe you made a mistake because uh, we who are of God, or even those who are born of God, even though we don't live in sin, we make mistakes mm -hmm. sometimes. That's why we have to constantly be analyzing ourselves, we have to constantly be asking God, especially during these days, asking God to show us more about ourselves, right? What happens when God shows things about us as well? Let's say that you made a mistake. The doubt came because you made a mistake and you didn't want to displease God. And now the devil is coming full power against you saying, you see, you're worthless, 
you're nobody, you're not of God, you're not the person you think you are. But your yeah, your testimony yeah. was a lie. But you know what? When when we make a mistake, or when God shows something about us, be it our intentions or the way we were dealing with people, the way we saw people, the way we dealt, we deal with others, the way we see others as well. When we are open to to allow the Holy Spirit to mold us, to shape us into what He wants us to be, it will hurt. You know, when, when we are molded, it, sometimes we need to be broken. When the Holy Spirit comes and talks and shows us something, the, the, the Bible says that His Word is like a, a, a sword of two double edges, head, double, head sword. double head sword. So it's like it, it comes to separate everything. It comes to really to cut, to penetrate inside of us. And it comes to break us as well. I was even reading today, uh, um, Psalm um, 39 it talks about that how, how, how David was asking God to forgiveness and how how broken he, he saw himself like when God shows us something about ourselves like we see that we are really nothing <laughs> yeah. right? but that sadness that, that comes with that situation how does God work with that he works to show us he brings that sadness that will lead us to repent to turn our back on that to change and to, to confess to God and don't do it anymore. But then the devil takes advantage of moments like this to make you, instead of you know uh, analyzing yourself and doing something about it, confessing to God and moving on, he wants to use that situation, that mistake, or what you found out about yourself to make you look back. Yes, to take you back and you see Miss Amy, um, God, when he shows us something about ourselves, he shows, he, you know, it, it's so painful, but then he gives us the tool mm -hmm. to overcome. So he gives us his word that will lead us to change it, to be better. But when the devil comes with doubt, it's to put us down. Mm -hmm. It's to put us down and to make sure we stay down there. Because when we're down, when we're living in doubt, that creates fear, that creates anxiety, and that creates an open door for, for him to come back, mm -hmm. for him to work in us. Because when our life is on the altar, he doesn't have us anymore. So when he looks for an opportune moment where maybe you made a mistake or something happened and God was allowing that to happen to show you, to correct yourself so that you do not lose your salvation at the end. Mm -hmm. But then the devil sees that opportunity, I'm gonna put you there and I'm gonna come back mm -hmm. into your life and I'm going to take possession of, of your life. So when the devil comes with doubt, it's to put us down. But when God shows us that leads us to even repent, even if you've not repented yet, mm -hmm. maybe a few minutes ago you fell into sin, but when God shows you that you need to turn away, it's for us to feel that pain of, I can't keep doing this. I, mm -hmm. I can't keep living like this. Not remorse. To change. Right? It's not remorse. It's not just like, oh, mm -hmm. they found out I did it. And you oh, feel, you yeah. feel ashamed. Yeah, so, because now it's then, exposed. Then, yeah, you, you, yeah it's the, the, the pain of being exposed. Yeah. It's not the pain of displeasing God. Exactly. It's not the pain of uh, being away from Him. Yes. Of, you know, being, you know, uh, even being away from you, losing him, yeah, isn't it? Yeah. It's different. So you need to pay attention to how you feel about the situation, about your mistakes. If that is leading you to, you know, to put you down, to destroy you, God is not doing that. Mm -hmm. Okay. So another thing as well in regards to doubt is that sometimes doubts come with things that don't even make sense. Like sometimes a doubt may come to your mind saying like this: Oh, are you sure you were delivered? Yeah. Are you are you sure you are free? Mm -hmm. I don't think you are free. You're not delivered. Look, you are not, not delivered. <laughs> and sometimes it's based on, or, or you don't have the Holy Spirit. And sometimes it's based on, on what the person feels as well, yeah. isn't it? Like, oh, maybe they, they are feeling, uh, um, you know, they, they woke up and they didn't wake up. Yes, I feel great. They didn't. They sometimes we don't. Feel you don't like wake that. up like yeah. You wake <laughs> up like oh, okay, my so, lord. <laughs> that's why we have faith. Yeah. Isn't it? It's so great about faith. This is the sorry. <laughs> See, faith is already making me okay. So you know, this is the great thing about faith. Faith moves you and pushes you, and and faith is like opposite of what you, you know what you feel. So you may feel down, you may feel sad, 
but you confess what you believe and say, no, I don't care what I feel. I know and I believe God is with me, so I'm going to go and I'm going to fight and I'm going to do different. And I, okay, uh, I, like for instance, achievements as well. Yeah. Like many people, because they have expectations, they have been praying to achieve something and they didn't do it. Like, okay, my God, come with me. I want you, let, let I get this job so I may glorify. And they go there and they don't receive yeah. the job. They get a no, they get rejected or... They fail so, the exam and start, oh, so they start so feeling bad and, and they start opening doors. But when you are in the faith, you say, Amen, my God, if this is not the door that you have opened uh, have opened for me, you're gonna open a, 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 another door. Mm -hmm. You're going to show me a better one. This is the difference, even in situations like, like we are living right now. Everybody's panicking, but wait a minute, put yourself together. Don't stop going to those uh, sites to count how many people have been dying. Oh my God, because the more you do that, I know you need to be with awareness and all and take care of all the cells. But wait a minute, if you don't die of that, you're going to die of something so, else. We don't know when you're going to die. What you need to be sure about is that when you die, whenever this is going to happen, you are saved. You need to have that peace inside of you that you are saved. Mm -hmm. That, you know, God is going to take care of you. That, oh, but we are going to lack, we're not going to have anything. Even today and it's in the morning. We read about that, that God will make a difference. Well, again, then again I'll make a difference between those who serve me and those who don't. Yeah, those so, it is God's them. word. When you start applying yourself to what is written, instead of what is going on around you, thoughts, and, 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 and because the devil uses a lot of thoughts, and thoughts come from people, come out of nowhere. What we watch, what we listen, and even mm -hmm. as well, in our day, in lady days, you know, the time of the month, oh my gosh. The emotions and feelings that you feel, it's like if you don't go to the word of God, if you don't live by faith, those things are going to get to you because then maybe in that moment you're feeling so hot, you know, you're feeling um, edgy on edge, anxiety, like sometimes you feel anxiety. And then you have tied up the devil yeah. and you have to tie up your flesh, you have to tie up the, tied up the time of the month, your hormones, your menopause, your everything, you know, the devil comes with that and then the devil feeds on what you feel and when it feeds on that they you know he creates a situation to put you down because he wants our level of faith to be so down mm -hmm. where he can have access yes. that's what he wants to get us to that's what doubt does doubt is it's um an enemy it's our enemy of, of our faith of our salvation mm -hmm. literally this is it and that's why we have to always rely on what is written in the word of god you know um, intelligent faith it's, it's one of the things that blessed me uh, from the moment that I woke up to this revelation from God. And this is something that God brings to us even through the, the work of our, our church, of the Universal Church. I know that I believe there are churches of God out there. But if I can tell you about one thing that we can learn here in this church is about intelligent faith. It's a faith that makes you think, makes you question, makes you doubt the doubt. And not just go on with it, not just go and embrace it and accept it and don't even question it. Okay, you are not free. Why not? Why not? God will not forgive you, but where is it written in the Bible that He's not going to forgive me? Ah, you're not good enough. Okay, I mean, not good enough, but who are the people that God chooses? If you go to the Bible to see, to look for the people, the kind of people that God chooses, they're incapable, unqualified, uneducated. Look at the people that God chose. They were the despised, the ones that you know nobody wanted. God even, you know, He 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 chose a, a, a former prostitute yeah. to to be a part of the lineage of the Lord Jesus. So He chose a prostitute, prostitute. Mm. So there are many people saying, "Oh, my past and my this, and I made so many mistakes." So what God wants you to do is this, to rely on what he says. And even if you make mistakes, even if you, if you, if you, if you made a mistake, or as I said, you found out something about yourself and you, you really broken. Okay, it's also written in the word of God that this is how the portal works. If there's a problem there, it's a crack there, something there, what is it gonna know? It's not gonna have an imperfect one. So he says it's gonna to break it, he says, breaks and does it again so you get don't worry about the pieces you get the pieces and turn into a better person 
better than you, what you were before. So don't rely on feelings. Be careful on the words and the thoughts that the devil start feeding inside of you. Lies that you start believing, right? You start believing in lies and because of those lies that you believe in. Why do I say they are lies? Because they are, are completely against what is written in the Word of God. They are, they are completely opposite of what is written. If you think about the thoughts that you have been accepting in your mind and what is written, you're going to see that it has nothing to do. So what, what does that mean? That this is a lie. That there was a liar and a father of lies. He's been a liar from the beginning, a liar and a deceiver. So you have to be careful, be, be careful, sorry, because sometimes the thoughts that comes to your mind, the feelings that you start entertaining, words that people throw at you, putting you down, this is actually the devil coming through in disguise, through that word, through that advice as well, isn't it? Can't repeat that. And, and everything is through the word of God. You have to believe in the word of God enough because some people, they don't believe in the word of God. They read the word of God. They, they say they meditate on the word of God. But when the situation gets tough, when the thoughts are even worse, when the feelings are even worse, even if they're saying, I'm praying about it, I'm tying it up, but in that moment, they back down and they believe the word of the devil. And you see, even the Lord Jesus, he used the word. Mm -hmm. He had to use the word to oh, yes. overcome the doubts that the devil was trying to sow inside of him. So he didn't only overcome for himself then, then he was setting an example to yes. us of what we should do in situations yes. like that. Yeah. He was giving us a hint, look, especially when you are in your desert, you are, you are going through a hard time. You're going through a very tough time. So the devil's always there. Yeah. Yeah. The devil's always always pop up in people's he's deserts. He's always but he's always looking as well as waiting and mm -hmm. when there's a good opportunity. When, and, when, exactly, and when it gets harder as well, because yes. he came at the opportune time. It was Jesus was already without eating for four forty days, so he waited for Jesus. He didn't come on the first day, on the fifth day, on the tenth day he was on the fast. He waited until he was really hungry to come. And, and, and the first thing, oh, if you are, really, yes, you think you are. are. <laughs> so transform this, this stones here in bread. In bread. Yeah. So it was, and he was hungry. Yeah. So you can see how the devil works and, and how Jesus reacted to that. Yeah. And that's how we have to react as well. That's how you have to behave when those thoughts, those feelings start coming at you. Even when, you, when you're feeling down, when you feel that you're worthless, when you, you, you really sinned, let's say that you really sinned, you fell. Like let's say that since you, you, you were, you know, since the lockdown, you're away from the church, you started feeling, feeling, see, weak, and you started giving in to those thoughts, temptations as well, and then you fell, and now you feel worthless, and usually when people fall, and without realizing, they, they start, you know, distancing yeah. themselves. From they people, they start from people from God because of the shame, and they, they think that it's over and it's too late, and it's not. Okay, it is not. If you decide now, right now, that you want to start again with God, you can, you can. Okay, it's your decision. It's the power that you have to decide. You know that the power of decision. What they, one of the girls from the VYG, she was talking to me about that, about the decision. Because she was hearing about that, that, you know, the pastor one day was saying like, okay, if you want to receive the Holy Spirit, then you have to decide, you need to make a decision. And she was like, have I made a decision? I didn't make a decision because it didn't happen yet. And I was telling her, look, how, how does it happen with a decision? Not always when you make a decision today, you're going to receive the, the Holy Spirit like in a few seconds, right? Because when you make a decision to follow God, to be truthful to God, to be indeed a woman of God, you have to make many other decisions after that, right? You're going to be tested after that. When you, when you make a decision, it's like this, okay, from now on, I'm not going to be that person anymore. And, and if you stand, stand on that decision, okay, yeah. what, is, what are you going to do, okay? When people start inviting you to go parties or to go to certain websites now, or to certain chats now, and you, no, I made a decision, I'm not going to do it. So, Day after day, they, you know, your, your attitudes, your decisions, your choices, uh, you know, even what you do with your day, putting God first, like, okay, I woke up before, I wouldn't 
mind, I would just go on my day, but now no, I made the decision that I want to God, put God first in my life. So you pray in the morning, you seek Him, you, 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 you know, you, you start reading the Bible, but it's so difficult, but I made the decision. <laughs> you know, it's not just like, ah, uh, it's so difficult to read the Bible because you need to know the Word of God to overcome that, right? So it's part of your decision as well to, to insist, to persist, okay? I may not understand everything right now, but let me start here with the Gospels. The Gospels is uh, Matthew, Mark, Luke, and John. They talk about the life of our, the, our, of our Lord Jesus, his teachings until he, he died. So everything that he had done, what he taught his disciples, the way he dealt with them. We have so many things that you can learn, right? And meditate upon, little by little, you start applying that. But you see, it's a decision that you make. So that decision will lead you to see God, to listen to Him, to understand His Word. You're not going to give up until you do it. It's going to, uh, this decision will help you go fight your flesh every day, every time your flesh wants to rise and, and, and make you do things you don't want. But wait a minute, if you make a decision, then God will give you the power to stand by that decision. If you really made it, truly, God will help you through. You're not going to be alone in this. Right? Yeah, and, right? And a decision is not by what you feel. A decision is by reason that with your mind, this is what I'm going to do. This is what's going to happen. I'm going to resist every day. I'm going to say no to my flesh. You know, if someone comes with a negative word, I'm going to push that away. I'm not going to listen to that. Mm -hmm. It's it's like reason. It's like a, being a firm and affirmative inside of you. It's like you know your name. I know my name is Kimberly. Mm -hmm. If someone tries to call me Esther, I know my name is not Esther. Mm -hmm. So it doesn't matter whatever they say. No, but your name is Esther. I saw your birth certificate. What well, I've seen my birth certificate. I know what I've been called for over so so years <laughs> that has been Kimberly and that's what the power of decision is mm -hmm. it's like no matter what anyone says no matter what the devil says no matter what even your feelings because our feelings yeah. come to even speak to us we say no I have made a decision mm -hmm. and I'm going to stick to that decision and nothing and no one is going to change that yeah. so you don't feel and that's what helps us every day to overcome because amongst working with the youths, I can speak about the youths, mm -hmm. they go with their feeling, they make, they say a decision, okay, I surrender my life to you, God, I'm gonna cut off from A, B, and C. But then tomorrow, the test comes, the next day, the test comes, oh, you know, um, I couldn't overcome that, so I'm just gonna give in to that sin, to that weaknesses, to that temptation. Mm -hmm. So in that moment, they went with what they felt. Mm -hmm. So that's why many young people, they haven't yet made a decision. And it's not just because that they are young. I know that when we are young, right, we're still young. We're still, <laughs> still young. <laughs> we're <Not laughs> really younger. The thing <laughs> that you go with the feeling is even more. Because mm -hmm. the feelings are like, whew, it's really exploding yeah. feelings and hormones everywhere, right? Yeah. So so I know it is, uh, it's harder, but it's not impossible. Because even the Bible says that when, when the Holy Spirit will come, it says that the, the youth will have a vision. Yeah. They will have vision. Why? Because the youth of today, they don't have no vision. Youth who don't have God in their lives, usually, usually, not all of them, but they don't have a vision, a goal for their lives. They want to enjoy life if, they, if, there, is, if there was no tomorrow. Right, there was no tomorrow. Right? So, I mean, this is a decision. You set your, your eyes on your goal, on your target, and you keep going. Don't look to the right or to the left, okay? So this is it, what you have to do. Feed that decision every single day that you have made to follow God, to receive the Holy Spirit and keep walking forward. Keep looking forward, okay? And whatever the devil tries to use to put you down and to, to make you feel bad or worthless, no. Go to the Word of God. Get to know what God says and start combating that as well, okay? So going back to the to the intelligent faith, this is what we have to do. Think about it, okay? When a thought comes, when an idea comes, oh, it's not gonna happen. Humanly speaking, it may sound true because it's true. Like, okay, years are really passing to some people, and they're like, okay, first year full of faith, second year, but now ten years, fifteen years. Where is this area of my life? When is this going yeah. to happen? I don't think God really to bless me yeah. and they start doubting yeah. they let 
time also make them doubt so the situation and it, and it makes the blessing even you know take longer to happen because there's no more faith over there and that's where we have to go to the source the word of god god says whatever he says when it goes out it never comes back void mm -hmm. so the word of god the promises of god for our lives will never be void it will it will always happen it shall happen and that's what we have to hold on to every moment even the situation shows you you're, you're seeing it it's happening but when you believe in the word of god and the promise of god and what he has said you're not going to look back you're going to hold on my god i'm not seeing 15 years has passed 20 years has passed but you said and because you said and you put that assurance inside of me of that promise it will happen. It will surely happen. Mm -hmm. I don't know when. It's, it seems to be taking long, but I choose to trust in you. I choose to believe in you. Help me. Give me the strength. Like the man who told Jesus, help me in my unbelief. Mm -hmm. <laughs> he believed, but there was a because of what was happening. I was like, oh my gosh. Mm -hmm. But I was like, God, I really want to believe. Help me. So it's the same thing, my God. Help me to hold and on because to Because the promises. situation was like, humanly speaking, was important. Yeah. What was going on with his son? Right? Yeah. Was that demon possessed? The disciples could not help him. Yeah. Okay, so the disciples thought, will you really help do something? Like he was even better if yeah. Jesus could do it or not. Yeah. Isn't it? So sometimes it is, maybe they heard from the pastor, no, God is going to bless your life. It hurts from someone, or even they read it in the Bible, no, I am with you, I'm going to bless you. But then they start looking and, and at the situation, and like, mm, is it really going to happen? Mm -hmm. Isn't it? So you need to feed your faith. Feed your faith so that you may combat the doubts. You will not be able to just overcome doubt, doubt just like that. Mm -hmm. It's not just about, I know, I'm just not going to about it. It's not tied up or it's not tied up. Not tied up, but you're not even thinking about it. So it will come back again. It will come back again, more convincing than before. Yeah. So if you don't have a more convincing, right? <laughs> yeah. you, Make, you know, put a, a full stop on that. Yeah, like a, a more convincing like, argument. Like, Which shut up there. Yeah. You know, that word that yeah, like Jesus, Jesus had to say, that, that it has already been written. He said, it has oh, it's already been written. Like, Jesus had to shut the mouth of the devil because yeah. he wasn't stopping. He had to put a full stop. Look, Satan, it's already been written. Yeah. Blah, 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 blah. And it's the same. <laughs> <laughs> it's the same thing. You have to, like, put and a this full is what stop. It means. It it's a means to God. So submit to God, submit to His word, obey Him, do His, do His will, do your part. So the devil will flee from you. Yeah. Resist the devil, right? So if you submit to God, you get to know what God is saying to, to you. Mm -hmm. That's what you're going to use to resist Him. And that's how He's going to flee from you. You cannot just tie up, tie up. Yeah. No, no, no. Even like a temptation as well. Like temptation comes, knock at your butt. But no, no. <laughs> Today, you know, I can't. I'm a Christian. <laughs> you know, uh, I'm a Christian. Uh, come on. You say, no, excuse me, I don't want to have anything to do with you. Yeah. I, I'm, I'm not interested, okay? Yeah. I block you. If you start doing things that, you know, you know, those people start sending you things yes. or you always bring you more words of doubts or, you know, please cut those things out, okay? Be kind, be polite with people, understand that not everybody is in the same faith as you are, okay? So you cannot, you have to be, um, to be careful not to be offensive yeah. to people as well, okay? You have to understand that one day you were also like me, we used to be like that, they may not understand, but at the same time, make sure you protect your faith, okay? Very well protected because you need to overcome all the the you know the darks of the devil and everything that he tries to uh, to do to affect our lives all right yeah. so this is it for today and we'd like to those of you who have the card those who don't have it's okay next time you can acquire it if you're from another country you don't have it or from a place that is far you're not from the church you won't be able to have the card with you we have been putting here each month a sticker right for each month so the month of February put heart, which is the, the villain that we, we fought and uh, we got to know more about. And today, March, we are talking about the villain, which is doubt, okay? If you'd like, because you don't, you don't have the sticker with you, you can write with a marker there, doubt, okay? So just you may remember the message that we spoke about today. 
All right. So if you have um, actually knowledge, if you have actually we have a, a homework for them as well. Okay. Isn't it? For them to work on from now on, from today on, and this is not only homework. This is job work. This is everywhere every, work every <laughs> day that you have to do. Okay. Whenever doubts come from instead of going along with that question maybe it's a question that popped in your mind maybe it's a feeling it's an idea it's a thought right something that is making you you know question your spiritual life putting you down now you're going to doubt the doubts okay now you're going to use your intelligent faith to understand wait a minute where is this coming from what does the word of god say about Okay, don't be too quick to, you know, just give in and, and go with the flow. No, protect your faith because your faith is the most valuable thing that God has given you. And it's through your faith that you're going to be saved, you're going to save others, and you're going to receive the Holy Spirit. And what else? Without our faith, it's impossible to please God. Yeah. All right, so God bless you all. Thank you for being with us. And see you next time. See you. Bye bye. God bless you. Bye bye. Bye. Take care.